Hello and welcome to Beat the Nation GCSE Higher Week 8 with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation, I hear you say? Well, thousands of students all around the country have been sitting quizzes on my diagnosticquestions.com website. And I've gone into one of these quizzes and I've picked out three questions. And they're the three questions that you can see on the screen in front of you now. But these aren't any old three questions. Oh, no, 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 no. These are the three worst answered questions from that quiz. And I have five challenges for you. So challenge number one, can you get each of these questions correct? And that's going to be easier said than done. These are tricky questions. Question two, um, so challenge two, sorry, out of these three questions, what do you reckon the worst answered question is? And then I wonder if you can predict what the most popular choice of wrong answer is for each of these three questions. And then it gets tricky. Can you explain why other students may choose these popular wrong answers? And then finally, and probably the hardest challenge of all, imagine you're sat next to somebody who's absolutely convinced that their wrong answer is in fact correct. How would you help convince them, not only that you're right, but in a nice way, that they're wrong? So what I suggest you do now is you pause the video, have a go at these three questions, bear my five challenges in mind, then whenever you're ready, press play again, and we'll go through these together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one, right, let's go through these, and for a bit of drama, let's go through them in reverse order. So I'm gonna start with the best answered out of these three questions, and it is this question here on powers. Now, um, what makes this question difficult, I think, is the fact you've got a couple of negatives bombing around here, and you've got to make sure that we know the significance of each of these negative signs. Let's start with the one in the power. If you have a negative in a power, it means one thing and one thing only. It means you need to take the reciprocal or find the reciprocal. It's like a code word. Now, one way to think about the reciprocal is that it means one over. It means whatever your thing is, let's say you have n, the reciprocal means you need 1 over n. That's what that negative sign means. Um, another way to think about the reciprocal is that imagine you've got a number, and let's call it p or something like that. The reciprocal is something that whenever you times it by your original thing, you end up with 1. And that's why it worked with this P multiplied by 1 over P gives you 1. So just, just a couple of examples of reciprocals. The reciprocal of 5 is a fifth. The reciprocal of negative a third is a negative 3. Help if I could do these. Uh, the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 over 2 and so on. So that's what that, that means. It's a code. It means do the reciprocal. So I'm going to deal with that first. So I'm going to rewrite this as I actually want the reciprocal of negative 3 squared. So I'm going to write that as 1 over negative 3 squared. And that's that dealt with. That's that negative sign dealt with. Get that boxed off straight away. Okay? Now we're going to turn to deal with this other negative sign. So what I've got to do now is I've got to do negative 3 all squared. So that's negative 3 multiplied by negative 3. That's what squaring means, multiply it by itself. A negative multiplied by negative gives me a positive. So I end up with 1 over positive 9. So I'm going for C as the right answer to this one. Does the uh, does the quiz agree with me? Yeah, it does. But look at that, only 62% of students also agreed with us. Most popular choice of wrong answer is D, negative a ninth. Now, that's not a bad answer. I mean, it's, it's not right. It's not great. But they've got the idea of this one over, this reciprocal bit. But as we'll read from this student here, we've got an issue here. Number multiplied by the power is negative, making the answer negative. No, that negative in the power is nothing to do with making answers negative. It's all to do with the reciprocal. Um, I also included another one there because I quite like that one. Students just seeing a negative and sticking a negative down. But we've got to be good enough to know exactly the significance of what these negatives are doing. Ooh, tricky start and we're just getting warmed up here because this is the second worst answered question there and it's this which of the following could give the equation of this curve so we've got ourselves a u-shape which uh, tends to suggest that it's a quadratic i'll just do a quick sketch of this and we know it crosses the x-axis at negative three and one we also know where it crosses the y-axis but actually we don't need to know that for this question and um, anytime we get equations that are factorized like um, ours are here, what we really need to know is where do they cross the x-axis. So I'm going to start looking at these points here. Um, let's start with this one here. 
x equals 1. What do we know about that, its location on this curve? Well, it's on the x-axis. So we know that when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0. Because every single point on this x-axis has a y value of 0. Likewise, look at that point. We know when x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to 0. Same reason. So what I'm looking for here, when I'm looking for uh, the equation of this curve, is I'm looking for brackets that when I substitute in x equals 1, I get a y value of 0 out the other side. So let's have a look. What, what kind of bracket would I need to, what would it need to look like? So when I substitute x equals 1 in, when I then multiply these two brackets together, I get a value of 0 on the outside. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for one that, that looks like it might be right. I'm going to go for a here. Look at this. Negative 3 and plus 1. That looks like it might be right because they're just the signs on, on these, uh, these points here. Let's try it. Let's substitute x equals 1 in. So if x is equal to 1, what do I get? So here I get 1 take 3. And here I get 1 plus 1. Does that give me zero when I multiply them together? Well, one take three is negative two, and one plus one is two. That is not looking good, because I'll tell you what, negative four is definitely not equal to zero. So that can't be the equation of the curve, because I know when x equals one, y is zero, so that's a goner straight away. And in fact, I'll tell you what, this one's gone as well, because look at that, x plus one. If I put one into there, that's not, that's not gonna give me that value that I need. Let's take this one here. Let's take B. Look at this. Let's have x plus 3, x take 1. Now notice what's happened there. The signs have changed round. Instead of it being minus 3, it's x plus 3. And then instead of it being positive 1, it's x take 1. What happens now when I substitute x equals 1 into this expression? Well, I can see, look, I'm going to get 1 subtract 1, which is going to give me 0. And the beauty of that is whatever I'm, what it, I don't care what's in this bracket, because when I times it by 0, I'm going to get 0 out. Likewise, what happens when I substitute x equals minus 3 into this bracket? Again, I get minus 3 plus 3, which is going to give me 0. Couldn't care less what's in this bracket, because as soon as I get a 0 multiplied by something, my answer is going to be 0. So the only bracket that, pair of brackets that can work is that. And the best way to think about that is you are looking for values of x that when you substitute them into the brackets, give you 0 out. And we know that one of those values of x must be 1, so 1 in there is going to give me 0, and we know that one of those values of x must be negative 3, and indeed if I substitute negative 3 into that, I get 0 out. So when I think about factorising and looking where things cross the x-axis, I'm always thinking values of x that make my y equal to 0. So I think B is the right answer to that one. Uh, fortunately, we seem to be right, but look at that. 31% of students have just gone for what we looked at first, just stick down negative 3, stick down 1 and hope for the best, but it doesn't quite work like that. Whew, which brings us to the worst answered question, and it is this question here. Now, this is interesting. This, this is a definitions question, and, and often definitions questions are well answered, but this is really poorly answered. This, so something must be going on. So let's have a look. The best name to describe a straight line whose endpoints both lie on the circumference of a circle is, let's draw one in. Let's imagine that's the center of our circle. Points on the circumference. There's my straight line. And what have I got there? So I've got a straight line that goes through the center from one end to the other. The name for that is a diameter. So is that the answer? Is, is uh, C right diameter? But wait a minute. There's nothing in this definition that mentions that that line has to go through the center. Indeed, it could have just done that. That fits. Straight line whose endpoints both lie in the circle. Could have done that. It could have done that, which goes really close to the center, but doesn't just doesn't quite go through. Now the question is: what's the name for a straight line whose endpoints are on the circumference but doesn't necessarily pass through the center? Well, the name for that is a chord. Now, just to complicate things, a diameter is a chord. It's just a very special type of chord that goes through the center. But all chord means straight line that go that uh, endpoints both lie in the circumference of a circle. So A is the correct answer to this. Look at that. Now, only 49% of students agreed with us on that. Less than half of students. Most popular choice of wrong answer is C. And again, no surprise there, a student going for the definition of a diameter without probably reading the question carefully enough. So how did you get on with those three uh, questions? Don't worry if you found them difficult. The key thing is we confront them, we discuss them, and hopefully that puts us on the path to understanding them.
Um, if you want to try more of these out, if you head to diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019, you'll find loads of these revision quizzes. And if you're a teacher and you want to get your students set up on the platform, it's all completely free, so they can answer quizzes and they'll get them marked for them and so on and so forth. Head to ed.co.uk and check out the schemes of work. And if you need help getting your students set up on the system, go to hello at ed.co.uk and you'll find, or um, sorry, send an email to hello at ed.co.uk. Dot UK uh, with your students names and their class names and one of our team will help you uh, get set up. Hope you found that useful. I'll be back for another Beat the Nation soon. Take care. Bye for now.